This is KPRC 2 News at 5. After the deadly winter storm and there are still questions about who is responsible and what should have happened before and during that deep freeze. Good evening everyone, I'm Chris Gutierrez. And I'm Lauren Freeman. Now some elected leaders and experts say some of the deaths could have been prevented. KPRC 2 investigator Mario Diaz joining us live and Mario, what are they telling you? Uh, Lauren, Chris, are not only saying that it could have been prevented, but it should have been prevented with actions years ago. So if the same lesson gets learned over and over again, but we can't figure out what it means, then that's a sign we need to pay a little more attention. So I think there's reason to be frustrated. Frustration still boiling over the deadly freeze that ravaged Texas last month. A freeze that, according to ERCOT, saw over 1,000 units fail at several dozen plants around the state. Some of those facilities, the same ones that went down during a paralyzing North Texas freeze in 2011. I think we're in a worse shape than we were 10 years ago. This from controller Glenn Hager. 10 years ago, as a state senator, he authored legislation requiring the winterization of generators to avoid future failures. The preventative steps were not taken. The entire state was put on ice last month as a result. The takeaway moving forward? I think we have to make a very strong statement to the rest of the nation, the rest of the world, that Texas is not going to have an event that we had just here a few weeks ago. It's the same lessons learned. Michael Weber is the deputy director of the Energy Institute at UT. The punishment for the companies who fail twice in 10 years tends to be financial. Financial because without power, the companies could not produce and make money. Weber says it all ultimately impacts the financial pockets of everyday Texans. Texans will pay for it. It'll be Texas insurance payers, uh, rate payers for the electricity and gas, as well as the taxpayer. State Rep Gene Wu says the costly repetitive cycle could have been avoided and should be moving forward. We chose not to force them to do the weatherization that they were needed to do to prevent another outage like this. And this is the end result. And of course, this is something that they're debating and examining and analyzing very carefully up in Austin moving forward. The other key point in mind that you heard from Weber there is that Texans don't want to have to pick up the tab in these kind of situations. And he points to the fact that there is a track record now, an established one with major winter storms in this state. May not happen every year, but it happens enough to say, hey, it's time to change. Pointing back to last month, 2011, 1989, and 1983, according to him. Live in Sugarland, Mario Diaz, KPRC 2 News.